So hello there guys, uh, I'm here with uh, another video about dies and today I'm going to finally make an ASO die and uh, today's ASO die is going to be Mordant Yellow 10 which is a die used in, in textile industry and also for dyeing nylon it's as the name implies yellow uh, I have a sample of, of it right here because I've already made it and now I'm going to just repeat it to show you the process uh, so as you can see I have calculated all the amounts of uh, chemicals so the first step is going to be the neutralization of the sulfanilic acid with potassium hydroxide you could of course use sodium hydroxide or uh, sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate, potassium carbonate, potassium bicarbonate whatever you want really I'm using potassium hydroxide because I uh, ran out of sodium hydroxide and yeah that's the only reason so the next step is going to be the isotization of the sulfanilic acid potassium salt and for this we're going to need hydrochloric acid and uh, sodium nitrite and this is going to uh, give us our diazonium uh, salt and Another step is the neutralization of our uh, salicylic acid with also potassium hydroxide. And then we are going to be azocoupling the potassium salt of salicylic acid and the diazonium salt to produce our dye, which is going to be in the potassium salt form. We're going to participate out the free acid with hydrochloric acid and then we're going to filter and recrystallize. So the first step is going to be really easy. We're just going to uh, neutralize our sulfanilic acid. So there goes the sulfanilic acid, and there goes our potassium hydroxide. And I'm just going to pour some water to, you know, react it. So now we can add the sodium nitrite. goes the sodium nitrite and you can actually see a slight color change these are probably some side reactions I'm not sure what's actually going on this is uh, of course not our dye yet because there's no salicylic acid but there's definitely some kind of side reaction going on so now we come to our diisotization process you know when we turn the amine group into diazonium salt so we got some hydrochloric acid right here uh, ice and a thermometer so I will, I'm going to add the hydrochloric acid to the ice and now we're going to add our, uh, the, our yellow mixture to this hydrochloric acid temperature has to be kept below 4 celsius so yeah, let's prepare our diazonium salt. See how rapidly uh, the temperature increases. That's why it's important to have temperature control and ice. I also got an ice bath uh, behind the paper just in case it goes uh, warmer. And I think I'm going to put it in the ice bath just to. So this is pretty much the end of the addition as, and as you can see we get a lot of milky white stuff and this is our diazonium salt. So do not try to isolate this because diazonium salts uh, are known to be explosives. 
So now let's get to neutralizing the salicylic acid. So I get the salicylic acid weighed out. And I also got the potassium hydroxide weighed out. And now we're going to get to azocopoline. Okay, let's do it. As you can see, it's nice red color. So I will let it react and then we will separate the free acid of our dye. And now we're ready to participate out the less soluble in water uh, free acid of our dye. So I got some hydrochloric acid right here. And let's add it. As you can see, it gets very goopy. It basically turns into paste. But that's exactly what we want. That's our dye. And now we uh, get to the most tedious part, which is uh, filtration. You can of course do a vacuum filtration. Uh, but I'm doing a gravity filtration and that's going to take quite a while so I'm going to skip until it's filtered. So this is all the goop I have filtered. It's Now it's the time for recrystallization. So I have noticed that uh, the free, free acid of this dye is quite soluble in water actually. Uh, but it's more soluble in hot water than in cold water. So it's pretty easy to uh, recrystallize it. So yeah, I have put it on a hot plate and I'm waiting for it to boil. Finally, it's clear. Let's just take it off the heat. So as you can clearly see, the dye has participated out as uh, very shiny needle-like crystals. And now we're going to filter them and dry them. So yeah, I think this concludes the video. Uh, the yield was on the previous batch. I haven't measured the yield on this batch uh, yet. Uh, the yield on the previous batch was 40%, mm, which is not terrible, not great, but it's pretty pure, has cool crystals and cool color. So I will call this uh, synthesis a success. That's it. See you.